Hello? Good evening, members of the board, superintendent of schools, this administrator, all the administrators, and the public. Uh, <clears throat> we would like to take a few short minutes of your time, of your valuable time, to go over a report on the water quality testing that we have been doing in the district recently. Just, just to touch bases on the basics, uh, typically the, the lead in plumbing in the solder that was used to put the pipes together, uh, the fixtures were made out of brass that have a lead content. They are the contributors to the lead into the water. That's how the lead gets into the water. And especially the water is a little more corrosive, then it creates a, a chemical reaction with the lead in the fixtures, and that's how the lead enters into the water stream. The EPA and the local and uh, state governments control the quality of the water from the suppliers. In other words, they have to do testing periodically and offer a report once a year uh, to the government and to the users. So therefore, the, uh, the, mostly the water that comes from the street is, a sa is safe water. It's when it comes to our buildings that start into contact with the plumbing and the, then the lead start leaching into the water. Now, the, the Elizabeth Public Schools have been very proactive in testing the water. That's what we did testing about three years ago, and we really um, um, embarked in a new testing program, even when there was no requirement to do so. The, the board, uh, concerned with the safety of the students, pushed, the, pushed us to really go and uh, be diligent in uh, procure a new set of testing. So therefore, if we had no regulations, we have no protocol, we did a lot of research, we did a lot of inquiries, so we can develop a specifications, so we can go out as required by the procurement laws uh, to obtain a request for proposal, um, which is a type of public bid. So that was published and the deadline for submission was uh, uh, Friday, June the 10th. On the, on the 10th, we received six proposals from six different companies, consultants and uh, labs. Then, uh, then the, uh, the proposals were reviewed, the recommendation was made to the board and the board awarded the contract to Pars Environmental on Thursday, June the 16th, 2016, to sample and test water points. The new water sampling, as the company prepared and mobilized, they started the new water sampling on July 13, 2016, at all the public schools and all the administrative buildings. Uh, the testing uh, takes a little time. The timelines is critical because since the schools were having summer school or summer programs, and the testing cannot be done on, uh, unless the, the water doesn't, is not used for eight hours, we could only do the testing like five o'clock in the morning to seven, four o'clock in the morning to 7.30. So uh, that's how the testing proceeded. And we um, tested 2,905 uh, 2, water points, were sampled and tested. The sampling, was completed in August 4, 2016, and the results were received on August 24, 2016, actually yesterday. Now, the number of water outlets exceeding the action level were 41 points of consumable water outlets, and another 117 other water points of the 2,905 exceeded the actual level of 15 parts per billion. Of the types of water outlets that we sampled were water fountains, which were drinking fountains and water coolers, uh, food prep outlets, which were faucets that are used to obtain cooked water, and then other, uh, it's classroom sinks, bathroom sinks, dishwater, dishwashing sinks, faculty sinks, etc. This table shows a summary of, of the results by school. 
this, this chart and the following three charts shows how many water fountains, how many in the food prep, and how many of the other uh, fossils uh, exceeded the 15 parts per billion uh, limit. Uh, as you can tell, uh, there is really no pattern, uh, except that some of the bigger schools might have a little more points than the other ones. Some of them have zero, they have none of neither of the categories, and others uh, maybe only one, and, uh, and so on. So this is 14 to 26. So this is so you have an idea. Resulted in a total of 31 water fountains, uh, 10 food preparation uh, outlets, and 117 of the others. Now, the remedial actions that, that we are taking is that the drinking water outlets and food preparation outlets, which are the consuming water, with a result greater than the action level, will have plumbing components replaced and water filter installed. When we talk about water components, meaning the bubbler or the faucet, we could remove the, pl the plumbing below it and replace it with a flex stainless steel that has no lead. We will put a filter and then a, the, we'll replace the valve because that valve might be a contributor of lead to the water. Now, all of that we intend to have completed uh, by September 6, 2016. Since safety is the most important thing, we must and we will have that done before school starts. The remedial action for the other water outlet outlets that exceed the action limit, like sinks in the classroom, sinks in other places, will be shut down until we can do the remediation, just in case we cannot get it done before September 6. And if the sink uh, must remain available for the classroom. We, we will install a sign, do not drink, save for hand washing only until we can get to it. And we'll, of course, we'll prioritize those sinks that are uh, must remain available. So we might avoid to have to do that. So again, safety is the, is the mo most important part. Now, <clears throat> on July 19th, 2016, we will notify that a new re regulations were being adopted and made effective on July 13, 2016. And these regulations require that within 365 days, we must test all the water. Uh, all the districts were notified and they were directed to do lead sampling plan and then proceed with the analysis of the drinking water. Uh, I want to let you make note to you that actually uh, we did a jump ahead. So we, we started this process like more than a month before the regulations went in place. So we took a very proactive action to, 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 to do the water testing uh, by doing some inquiries and finding out what the protocol should be. The regulations also require notification. The districts must make all the test results available at the school facility and posted in the website, uh, and notification to the DOE and to the parents whenever the limit is exceeded. So we will uh, post. First of all, we're doing this. Uh, we're doing this presentation to to actually communicate the, the results today, only 24 hours after we had received them. Uh, in addition to that, by Monday, we will have all the results, every school, every faucet, posted on the website. So anyone who can, uh, wants to look at a little more detail, that will be there. Also, uh, the regulations uh, allow for reimbursement. So since all our testing, the way we perform it and the selection of the points meet the regulations, even if they were not in place before, we, will, we meet the regulations the way we do the testing. We are 
qualify to reimbursement. So we will, uh, what we will do is we will compile and submit all the documentation uh, to seek reimbursement for testing. And as soon as the website from the DOE is open, we will uh, we'll, we'll initiate the application. And uh, <clears throat> so this is my report. Thank you, Mr. Cotto. At this time, we want to call the City of Elizabeth Health Officer Mark Galicchio uh, to the mic. Hi. First of all, I want to say, Mr. Cotto, that was an excellent report. And as always, our health department works very well with the Elizabeth Board of Education. But pretty much all I want to say with this is in all the years I, I've been the health officer and have been with the city of Elizabeth, not one case of childhood lead poisoning has crossed my desk linked to any water systems in the school system. I mean, that's, I mean, I understand that people are nervous, they're fearful, but I can confidently say that we have not had any cases of childhood lead poisoning resulting in our city schools water systems. Thank you, Mr. Colicchio. Thank you for that report, Mr. Cotto. Um, at this time, we'd like to have uh, Mr. Kennedy take us through the agenda. Actually, uh, Mr. Nora? Sure. Uh, Mr. Cotto, I just want to say thank you to you and your staff, um, also to Mark, the health officer of the city of Elizabeth. Um, I think it's safe to say that I think we're the only district that's probably tested our water for lead twice in the last three years. So uh, thank you and to make sure Thank you to the old board who tested in 2013 and, and also to this new board now that agreed and tested every single outlet this year also uh, to make sure that our students obviously are not drinking lead and also that we're in the forefront of making sure that safety is first. So thank you guys. I appreciate it.